Hideo Kojima. You know him, the creator of skin breathing assassins, chicken hats and cutscenes that last for an afternoon. But do you really know much about him before he made his name with Metal Gear Solid? Kojima's credits outside of all things Metal Gear are few and far between, but some are genuinely remarkable, and Snatcher, first released back in 1988, is one such game. And it's one that is painfully unavailable for contemporary systems, despite holding up as this really quite brilliant graphic adventure game. The original release came out in Japan only on the MSX2 and PC-8801. It was later updated for the PC Engine in 92, adding a third chapter and voice acting and improved graphics. Gillian, what is it? What's wrong? Jamie, I've become a junker. A junker? Gillian, but why? It's this expanded version with enhanced graphics and voice acting that was translated for the game's only English language port, which was released in 1994 for the Sega CD. That's the Mega CD for anyone who isn't North American. But as a relatively late release for Sega's kind of outgoing peripheral, it didn't really sell many copies, and that's pumped the price of used versions of the game today up to eye-watering amounts. Now, I played it back in the day in the mid-90s, but I only ever borrowed it from someone. Nevertheless, I just loved my two complete playthroughs, so much so that it left a massive impression upon me, enough that whenever I think about games that are missing from the here and now, that I can't easily play today, this is the one that I always land on. And that's because it really hasn't dated anywhere near as badly as many of its platform peers or any of the cyberpunk adventures of its era. It's a curious but coherent merging of point and click environmental analysis, semi-open world exploration and visual novel-like passages of prolonged conversation. And weirdly, a little bit of first person shooting too. Its cast is really appealing, a mix of strong female informers and ostensibly good guys who ultimately aren't all they appear to be. Die, Junker! The protagonist is Gillian Seed, an oddly adorable new recruit of Junker, an anti-snatcher task force. Now he kind of creeps on an array of women throughout the game, but seeing his approaches get shot down never gets tired. His sidekick, Metal Gear Mark II, is a video phone on legs and would reappear, albeit redesigned, in Metal Gear Solid 4, Kojima here laying aesthetic roots for what would come much later in his career. And Kojima's talked about bringing Snatcher back in the past. In 2011, he talked about a sequel but said it would have to sell over half a million copies to be worthwhile, which sadly is a figure far north of what the original sold. He did add, however, that while he was too busy to work on it, he'd welcome another director taking the helm. Sadly, the calls on what happens with Snatcher nowadays aren't really Kojima's to make. The game remains the property of Konami, and to date they've expressed no public interest in reviving it, either as a re-release, which would work perfectly for me, or something more explicitly sequel-shaped. But as the game's cult appeal continues to grow and those Sega copies remain entirely unaffordable, people like me will continue to ask about Snatcher and to wonder what could be. And you never know, someone might just be listening where it really matters. Please, Gillian, please take me with you. Hurry up and get on board, partner.